The Golden Altar of Prayer in Heaven. This is part 45 of the Revelation study. We've been working through Revelation, comparing spiritual with spiritual. That is, we, we look through the Bible, we compare Scripture with Scripture. Jesus' words are spirit. They're spiritual. They're spirit and life. Jesus is the Word of God. The Bible is Jesus speaking, the Spirit of Christ. We compare Scripture with Scripture here a little bit, there a little bit. We don't trust our own instincts. We look at what the Bible has to say. We, we, we scour the Bible looking for truth. Right now we're in view number two. Last time we looked at silence in heaven, part 44, and we saw that this silence in heaven in Revelation 8.1 is a, a provocation to prayer. It's, it's when we, we think God is silent, but it's our time to speak to him. It's our time to pray. It's, it's, it's that wonderful time, that opportunity that our prayers will ascend into heaven. And we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail today, the golden altar of prayer in heaven. Please consider subscribing to this channel, The Rock of Offense, so you, you continue uh, to get updates on these and other videos on the book of Revelation and other things. Okay, so let's read the passage, the golden altar in heaven, a beautiful passage. And again, before we do, on our website, therockoffense.com, we have the study notes uh, for these teachings. So you can always go look at the study notes, which I've had listed at the bottom of the slide here. Uh, but here's the passage, another angel came and stood at the altar. There's an altar in heaven having a golden censer. So this angel has a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne note the word all all saints all prayer of god's people is effective it's a beautiful thing it rises up to god the holy spirit intercedes with words that can't be spoken then when we're not sure what to pray for but our prayers do go right into heaven it's unbelievable and the smoke of that incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God in the angel's hand. Our prayers ascend right up before God. The angel took the censer, filled it with the fire of the altar, and cast it to the earth. That's surprising. Why would this angel with, with the prayers of the saints then fill it with fire and cast it to the earth? And there's voices and thunderings and lightning and earthquakes. So let's move on and look at these things in more detail. Okay, the key points we're going to look at. Why is it a golden altar in heaven, a place of sacrifice? It seems odd that that's there, but why is a golden altar in heaven? Why is the incense mingled with the prayers of the saints? And we get an important scripture on that. And very interestingly, why then is the golden censer filled with fire off the altar and thrown to the earth? So we're going to look at these three things and let's get right into it. Okay, first, the golden altar of incense. In the Mosaic Law, the, the tabernacle, and then later King Solomon's temple, they, 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 there was two altars. There's the brass altar of sacrifice, which was in the court outside of the holy place. And the holy place had two parts. It was the holy place and the holy of holiest where the Ark of the Covenant was. But there, the other altar was a golden altar of incense. And that was in the holy place, just outside the entrance into the inner holy of holies. So we see these two altars. So the one that we see in heaven, though, is the golden altar of incense. It's that beautiful golden altar that's in the holy place. And it's just outside the curtain before the holy, going into the holy of holies. And we see a commentary on that in Hebrews 9. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, the holy of holies, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that, uh, that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant. So we see that this golden censer and the gold, golden altar are, have to do with the most holy place, the holiest of all where the Ark of the Covenant was. It's a symbol, it's a picture of heaven itself. So we see right off the bat how important the golden altar of incense is because the prayers of the saints are so important. Okay, it's the symbolic meaning of incense. Very straightforward in the Bible. So we saw in Revelation 8-3 that there's a golden censer and there was given unto this angel much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Those prayers are not symbolic. There are literal prayers of the saints, but the incense is symbolic. And we see, for example, in Psalm 141, 
a beautiful relationship with incense. A psalm of David, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be sent before, be set forth before thee as incense. So incense, what is incense? It's a sweet smelling, beautiful smell. It's a wonderful smell. So our prayers are a wonderful aroma in the throne room of heaven. God enjoys our prayers. It's a beautiful thing. It, it's a, it's sweet smelling. It's a wonderful thing. So that's why prayers are symbolized by incense because they're a wonderful, sweet thing. And sometimes we take it for granted. Um, by the way, please consider subscribing to this channel. And let's move on now and look a little bit deeper into this study. Let, let's make note of the golden altar. Gold represents something of great value. There's an example in Job 28 of gold. This has to do with wisdom, but it's the same principle that wisdom, even, and it uses, but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price thereof. It's so valuable. It's so valuable, it's, it can't be gotten for gold. And gold is something very valuable. So if you can't even get it for gold, you can't buy it. It's, it, it's just so expensive. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir. So we see that gold, you know, this example in Job 28 is wisdom, but gold is something of great value in the Bible. And we, we re, may recall in Revelation 5, we studied this before, and this has to do with the four beasts and the 24 elders. And when the Lamb took the book, which is the scroll with the seven seals, they had everyone had harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints. It's a parallel passage to what we're reading here in Revelation chapter 8, but the golden vials full of odor. They're, they're, they're very valuable. And odors, by the way, is the same word for incense. So it's the same principle, but the prayers of the saints are like a sweet smell and savor, but they're very, very valuable because they're, they're treated as gold. They're contained in gold vials, and they're in the golden altar of incense. So they're, again, prayer has great value. Okay, but we, sometimes we get confused on prayer, and we say, well, we just pray for 10 minutes here, or, or we do it before meals, but, but we're commanded in the Bible, and sometimes people have a misconception about prayer. We're actually to pray without ceasing. We're, we're, it's something, it's, it's a r regular routine thing that we don't have to close our eyes. We don't have to, we can be driving a car, we can be, we can be sitting on a couch, we can be doing something, working outside perhaps or whatever, but we pray without ceasing. For uh, Thessalonians 5.17, Job 27, will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? We're to always call upon God. Acts 6.4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We, even if we're working at work, or we're in school, we, we, we can continue just cry out to God and say, God, help, help me in this situation. Lord, what, what do I do here? And we, we constantly have God in our minds, even as we're learning, even as we're working. It's something that we don't isolate the pieces of the day. We don't necessarily have to wake up early and have a time of prayer. That's not, it's okay if you do, but, but, but we pray all through the day. Don't, don't limit it to a piece of your day. We're to pray without ceasing. Psalm 25, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art a God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. We're always waiting on God. We always have him in our mind. We're always talking to him. 1 Timothy 5.5, 5, now the, he, she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. It's a continuance in prayer. We pray without ceasing. That's what makes our prayers so valuable. They go right into the throne room of heaven. They're treated as gold. Now, let's move into, we, we've looked at prayer and the value of prayer and even kind of how to pray, that we pray without ceasing. We don't isolate and put it in a box. We're always talking to God. But, but, but we see this angel that takes the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and he cast it to the earth. And there was voices and thundering and lightnings and an earthquake. And we say, wow, that's odd. Why in the world are we th the angel throwing the, the altar of incense fire you know, mixed with incense and prayer that were thrown to the earth. Because normally fire from heaven, it, it's a portrait of judgment. So there's, there's a judgment involved here. And how is that related to the prayer for the saints? And just for example, 
uh, Psalm 140, as for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning calls fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they raise not up again. And then Luke 9, 54, when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elisha did? There's a piece of our prayer that we, our prayer is for justice to be done. We, we, we don't want to see people suffer, but we also want God's justice. We want to see his holiness. We want to see his righteousness prevail. And there's an element of that that can only be done in judgment. So let's look on on the next slide. And there's what's called these imprecatory psalms. And it turns out there's a whole bunch of psalms. If you read the book of Psalms, many of them, many of them have to do with the call for judgment a call for God's righteousness to be done on earth. Uh, and, and for example, Psalm 69, there's a, there's a passages here, the Psalm of David, Save me, O God, for the waters are coming to my soul. I sink in deep mire where there's no standing. I'm coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. David was always being persecuted. He was always in trouble of some type or another. He, he, he lived for God, but he was always in trouble with, with Saul and his, some, his sons and other enemies. And we see later in this psalm, they gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And that's, that's a symbol. This is a messianic psalm. It's pointing to Jesus Christ. David's acting as a type of Jesus Christ. And then the next verse says, pour out thine indignation upon them. And I, they, their wrathful anger take hold of them. There has to be righteousness. Jesus has, has poured out his soul for his people, but, but there still has to be a day of judgment, a day of righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of living and not be written with the righteous. So we see this concept about our prayers looking for justice. And that's really what the book of Revelation is, is pointing to. It's pointing to a judgment day. It's pointing to good against evil and the destruction of evil. And that's something that a Christian can't just always say, oh, everything's just fine, because it's not. There's evil all around us. Okay, and we see that this, this altar, the censer of the fire resulted in voices, thunder, lightning, and earthquake. Revelation 8 again, uh, verse 5. And, and, but we see the exact, and we've looked at this before, but those are all types and pictures of judgment. They're types and pictures of judgment day. And when we look at the seventh angel, the seventh ball of judgment poured out in Revelation 16, this, uh, well, let's read this. The seventh angel poured out, poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. This is judgment day. And there were voices, thunders, lightnings, and a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give her into the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. It's a picture of judgment. It, the book of Revelation, is the, the, a theme of that is salvation for, this, for God's people and judgment on the, 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 the Satan and his whole kingdom. So we see that, that prayer has to do also with prayer for God's justice and righteousness. Okay, so just a quick summary. We saw in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, the silence in heaven. We saw that in the last video. God appears silent, but, but he's patient, and it's a time for us to call out in prayer. And we see this beautiful golden altar of incense, the great value of prayer. We're to pray continually. It's a beautiful, sweet-smelling uh, savor toward God. But, but our prayer also includes... The, the, the looking forward of the new heavens and the new earth, the looking forward to Judgment Day, the looking forward of God's righteousness to, to prevail. So we're done with the golden altar of incense for now. There's always more notes on the website, but we're going to move on. Next video, part 46, we're going to do an overview of the seven trumpets. We're going to do an introduction, and then we're going to get right into the trumpets after that. Please consider subscribing, and thank you very much for watching this video.